So here's a little tutorial on Zoom. So when you join your meeting, your mic should be muted. It's really important that when you join meetings that your microphone is muted and you can unmute it by just hitting this and then you'll see yourself bubbling away there. Let's have a look at the audio settings while we're at it. So I'm actually using an interface which is called the Quartet. I actually have a mic plugged into it. Um, but in your microphone, you need to have that set to whatever you're going to use. So if it's a Mac and you're just using the laptop mic that's built in, uh, then that would be built in audio. If you're on a PC, then obviously this is going to show whatever audio device it is that your mic is connected to. So depending how, on how you guys are micing yourselves up, then obviously your microphone needs to be set to whatever that is. Likewise, the speaker is your output that you're listening to on your headphones. So I'm also listening to myself on my quartet interface. Uh, and so I have that set to quartet so that, um, and you can see there's a whole lot of other options that I have on my machine, uh, which will be different on your machine. But you know, if you're listening on a Mac just with the mini jack, um, you would just have it on built-in output. So basically you just have to set it to look at your microphone input and to send it to your headphone source and you can test either of those two using these to make sure you're getting audio. Now this whole input volume thing here, I have got it so that it's not automatically adjusting the microphone volume. I've just found for me it's um, a better, better quality um, if I'm doing it that way. So I then just set my input level by using this input volume control. You know, turning it down and I get softer or turning it up and so on. So that's just your, you set your input volume until that starts looking good. Now here's some important options. So join audio by computer when joining a meeting is kind of important. I think, you know, throughout this, we're going to be playing each other things across the connection. Obviously, I need to have this join audio by computer when joining a meeting so that I can play you things off my computer through the Zoom connection. Uh, likewise, in order for you to be able to play things to the class or to me, you're going to need to have Zoom listening to your computer audio. So you need to have join audio by computer selected when you join a meeting. This would be polite to have on. Mute your microphone when joining a meeting is also good because it just means that when people join the class, their mics aren't all open and it just gets crazy. So have that on mute for you guys. Obviously, I'm not going to use it because my mic's going to be open from the time uh, that we start these meetings. I have enabled stereo. This may not appear for you if you're not using a paid version. I haven't really got into that at the moment. It's more important for me um, playing stuff back out to you than anything else, but I've got that enabled. Okay, uh, in the advanced audio settings, this is really important. So you really want to have this check to show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. Okay, that is really important because what that does is it improves the audio quality uh, that is coming from you back to the class. Now, it's good if you are in a quiet location when you're doing these classes because what, in order to improve this audio quality and have original sound, it's actually going to turn off a lot of the background noise suppression stuff that you're using. Uh, you really do need to be using headphones when you're doing these classes. Yes, sure, you can have a laptop and just use the laptop speakers and speak into your mic, but it is really not a good option, okay? If you want to be heard clearly, uh, you want to come through uh, sounding good in the class, then you really want to have a set of headphones and not be relying on laptop speakers or something else to be playing back because you're going to be getting echo. And that's going to kick in a thing called the echo cancellation algorithm that's going to interfere with your audio. So you can see here also I've turned off this uh, background noise suppression stuff. Um, it does you know, default to auto, but that kind of cuts off your words and it gives you a bit of a burbly sound. Uh, you'll notice that that will, uh, we'll get to this in a minute, we can avoid that if we set up the audio after this point. But do this first, and then when you're back onto your main page, then you need to do something called turn on original sound that will then give you an improved soundtrack into the stream that everyone can hear. So you're probably not going to hear it so much at your end, but you will hear it uh, through the stream. You can start and stop your video. I've got it stopped because I'm just doing this demo. 
and you don't need to be seeing me in my lounge room doing the demo. If you need to share your screen, then you can click this button, share screen, and then it will show you all of the available screens that you have open on the window. Now this is really important. You are going to have Pro Tools open on your machine in the classes and you're going to want to be able to, at points, play something back to the class from Pro Tools across the connection into Zoom. Now in order to do that, you do need to select in this share screen option, this is where you actually say to Zoom, I want to share my screen. You do need to check the share computer sound option or it will not actually share your sound. Now the very first time that you do this on a machine, it will at that point download and install a special driver for your machine which is called the Zoom audio device. The Zoom audio device is a way to get application sound, so your sound applications into Zoom when you do this share screen maneuver here. So I've already got that installed on my machine because I've been using it for a few days to get a feel for the whole thing. Um, but you, the first time that you do it, it will prompt you to download and install that driver the very first time that you hit share computer sound and you go share. We're looking at a slightly imperfect version of what happens here because I'm just mirroring my desktop at the moment to do this demo video for you because essentially you can't see the zoom controls otherwise. So I've got it installed. Now um, I know it's installed because in order to get Pro Tools to talk to Zoom you need to go to the playback engine and you need to set the playback engine to Zoom audio device. This is just for the Zoom sessions. Uh, if you have it set to Zoom audio device when you're working on your assignments at home you're not going to hear any audio. But as soon as we go into a situation where you want to share me something across the connection then in order to get that into the Zoom stream so I can hear it or anyone else can hear it, you need to have Zoom audio device selected. If you don't, so for me I'm using a thing called the Quartet, um, then you're going to hear it on your computer, okay, but other people are not going to be hearing it on the Zoom stream. So the most important thing to remember is if you are in a situation where you want to play me or anyone else audio, across Zoom from Pro Tools, you have to have this playback engine set to Zoom audio device. And as soon as you've finished that task and you want to just hear Pro Tools on your machine, uh, you need to change it back to whatever interface you are using, or at least to built-in output if you're not trying to record anything at that point. So I'm sharing my screen in Zoom now. When I hit play in Pro Tools, it's going to be coming out, okay? So you'll be able to, you'll be able to hear everything that's going on, okay? And most importantly, you'll hear it across the stream. And then when you finish sharing your screen, you need to go stop share. So see this up the top, and that will take you back to your main Zoom window. I can't show you this because I'm hosting this meeting but you can in the participants area of your Zoom put your hand up to speak. Okay, if you click on the participants um, uh, button in your control you can see a control that says raise hand. Okay, so you can use that. Uh, we can also open up a text channel uh, where we can be typing to each other in the chat channel and that can be pretty useful if you need to communicate something like let's say you want to ask a question but you haven't found that raise your hand function or I don't know you just want to make a comment about something that I could return to later then you can use the uh, chat channel and you can even send a file across the chat channel you can see down here so the chat channel is pretty useful uh, again, these functions are not available to you when you're joining my meeting because I say I'm hosting, uh, but I can create breakout rooms so smaller groups of you can go and communicate with each other, uh, share screens with each other in a breakout room that's independent from this main space. Likewise, I have recording controls and I will be recording all of these sessions to put up on iLearn 
and I have these pause and stop recording controls as the host but obviously as people attending the meeting you're not going to have these record functions. So you can start and stop your video, uh, you can put your mic in and out of mute. Uh, we've been through the basic audio settings and so yeah you can test it out. So a, a good way to test this out is to launch your own meeting. So you can start your own meeting in Zoom by just opening the Zoom application and going new meeting. It'll be a new meeting that only you'll be in but you will be the host in which case you'll see all of these controls uh, and you can record that using the dialogue here or up here and then experiment with your screen sharing and also with your Pro Tools Zoom audio device playback engine and then at the end of the meeting which I will do now so let me end this meeting so I'm the host so I'm ending it and I am recording what Zoom ends up doing is it'll convert that meeting recording while you're recording it makes a kind of temporary recording which it converts to a proper recording at the end uh, of every Zoom meeting and this is what I'll be doing at the end of every class okay it does take some time to do uh, depending on how long the, uh, the meeting is so I might cut this bit of the video out until it's finished so when it's finished it puts it into your documents folder that's if you're choosing to record it to your computer and not to the cloud and you can see this zoom video mp4 is actually a video of the session that we just did okay so let me just open this up so that's a you know I'm recording it at a full high definition so let's just zoom through it you can see green back engine to zoom audio device so that's a recording of the Zoom stream that I just made on Zoom. An interesting thing about these recordings is you can see the uh, screen actually looks pretty good. Um, the slight downside to the standard Zoom recording is that you know the audio quality is not brilliant. I'm in QuickTime Player where you can see the specification if you go show Moody Movie Inspector, and it tells you what it is that you've got. So um, the format it's 1920 by 1200 which is kind of close to high definition uh, video um, but the audio is only 32 hertz 32,000 hertz mono okay and it's at a quite a low bit rate okay so um, it's not a brilliant bit rate on the which, audio so I will be uh, uploading I'll be creating a kind of a composite record of all of our classes with the zoom video uh, but also with improved uncompressed audio which I'll upload to iLearn because ultimately you will be able to hear my audio examples a little bit better than if it's just in this 32,000 or 32k mono format which isn't terribly helpful for people studying a recording. So I'll end that video here but that just gives you a bit of a walkthrough of some of the audio features and some of the main features of Zoom.